Hey, it's Ashley with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 20 anime characters who got what they deserved. <laughs> yes, for this list, we're going to be looking over the jerks and jerkettes that got their just desserts in the most satisfying ways imaginable. Which anime scumbag do you think is in need of a royal roasting? Let us know in those comments. And if there's an anime list you want to see, go over to my Twitter at AshJBo, give me a follow, and then let me know. Number 20. Ishiki Otsutsuki – Boruto Naruto Next Generations Given how every member of this clan is a massive douche, you have to do a lot to make it to the top of the crap list. Ishiki did so by being utterly ruthless, wasting both Naruto and Sasuke, while also planning to make Kawaki his vessel. Unfortunately for him, he underestimated how much the young punk had learned. Using a shadow clone to negate the flow of karma, Kawaki ultimately bluffs Ishiki into wasting his remaining time, his body swiftly crumbling to dust soon after. <laughs> Number 19. Takaoka – Assassination Classroom not that we encourage kids to learn how to murder their teachers, but if there ever was one who deserved to get a knife buried in his guts, it was this tool. <laughs> After suffering an earlier defeat, Takaoka returns to take his revenge on Nagisa and Class E. While he certainly gets in a few good shots, he's wholly unprepared for Nagisa's new killer technique. Sure, he doesn't exactly get his ass murdered, but it's the next best thing. Still wish Koro sensei had the chance to turn him to mulch. Takaoka sensei, thank you so Number 18, Clementine, Overlord. There's no shortage of people that Ainz Ul Gon has decimated in the name of conquest, most of whom really didn't deserve it. Clementine, on the other hand, most certainly did. A vile murderer who took great pleasure in killing Ainz's temporary companions, Big Bone Daddy decides to get his revenge in the most brutal manner possible. <laughs> instead of zapping her into nothingness, he instead pulls her in for a big squeeze, one that eventually becomes so tight it breaks her. <laughs> Something tells us Albedo dreams of such things every night. Number 17, John Kiwatari, Kakegurui. You thought that this guy was just another uber wealthy douchebag walking around like he's the king of the world? Well, he is, albeit with a perverse personality, and who came way too close to living up to his violent promise of assaulting Yumiko when she shot him down. Have no fear, as his downfall is borderline exquisite. <laughs> After entering the debt exchange game in order to plummet Yumiko into even greater financial ruin, Kiwatari ends up losing a lot more than pride when the rest of the female players turn against him and leave him with a debt of 310 million. Pure poetry. <laughs> Number 16, Yuka Sasaki. 
talentless Nana on an island filled with students who happen to be gifted with supernatural powers, it turns out the majority of them are asshats who abuse their powers for their own gain. <laughs> Hence why the sweet and unassuming Nana is sent in to eliminate them before they can become a threat to humanity. Out of all her targets, the one who really had it coming would be this popular girl, who turned out to be a crazy stalker who had killed and reanimated her crush. <laughs> Naturally, both she and her undead lover find themselves in Nana's crosshairs. <laughs> Number 15, Saint Charles, One Piece. <laughs> Giving us our first taste of the deplorability that is the Celestial Dragons, this pampered brat of a prince was considered untouchable for any discrepancy towards him immediately prompted the world government to send their strongest forces to exact painful retribution. As such, Charles and his family are shown to be able to enslave others and commit murder without fear, at least until they messed with Captain Monkey D. Luffy. After gunning down Hachi, the leader of the Straw Hats hands out some much-deserved justice via a punch so strong it sends the Celestial Dragon flying through the wall. <laughs> Number 14, Cutthroat, Akudama Drive. To be awarded the rank of Akudama, you've had to cross some major lines, break plenty of laws, and just be a blight on humanity. While this doesn't always apply, it's most certainly the case with cutthroats. As his moniker suggests, he slaughtered hundreds upon thousands of people, all due to his obsession with the color red and general psychopathy. Unfortunately for Swindler, she becomes his new obsession, ready to take her head to feed his fantasy. Too bad he underestimated his quarry, what with Swindler able to get the drop on him and paint his whole world red in return. Number 13, Zorin, Helsing Ultimate. Not that we needed much encouragement to hate a Nazi vampire who gets high off killing innocent people with a scythe. Leading a vanguard of Millennium officers to attack Helsing headquarters, Zorin made the most of her time in the spotlight by putting best girl Ceres through a living nightmare. Good morning, Ceres. It's time to wake up. Did somebody have a nightmare? Not only did she cut off Ceres' arm and slice out her eyes, but also made her revisit the worst day of her life when she conjured a hallucination of the time her mother and father were killed and violated. <laughs> On top of that, she even killed Pip. That's why I had to swat him down. Like a gnat. Naturally, such atrocities earned Zorin a bloody beatdown after Ceres allowed herself to become a true vampire. How does it feel, you bitch? Number 12, Ichijo, Kaiji. On nothing more than a high class pawn in the chairman's corrupt game, Ichijo's inflated sense of self worth and desire to crush Kaiji quickly earned him the spot for the sequel series' main villain. I look in order to escape the forced labor camp and save his friends, Kaiji and Ichijo clashed through the medium of the ultimate rigged pachinko machine. <laughs> Nan 
Needless to say, they both went through the emotional ringer on this one. However, thanks to a hell of a lot of good fortune and Kaiji's wiliness, he ends up hitting the big one. As a result for losing the chairman so much money, Ichijo is sent to the same labor camp for 1,050 years. Number 11, Light Yagami, Death Notes. Whether you hated him as a mass murderer with a god complex or were sympathetic to his crusade, there's no denying Light's end was about as thematically perfect as could be. Having thought himself victorious against Nia, Light lets his arrogance get the better of him, only for it to get thrown in his face when El Successor reveals that he's been one step ahead of him, exposing him as Kira for all to see. <laughs> From there, it's just downhill for Lights, his followers abandoning him, getting shot to hell by Matsuda, all before Ryuk decides to end their game for good with one last entry in his death note. Number 10, Kamoshida, Persona 5 The Animation. Look, we all know that the video game is superior in every way, including the portrayal of its initial villain. <laughs> that being said, we can't get enough of watching this perverse volleyball teacher being reduced to tears. <laughs> After successfully completing their first heist, the Phantom Thieves managed to change Kamoshida's heart, forcing him to confront all the terrible things he did to his students, which led him to break down in front of the whole school as he confesses his sins. It may not ease the pain of what happened to Shiho, but it's a consolation prize all the same. <laughs> Number 9, Hayase, To Your Eternity. What happens when duty twists itself into madness? You get this scarred stalker. After finding herself horribly injured by Fushi, Hayase becomes infatuated with the shapeshifter to the point of obsession. <gasps> Not only did she kill March and Panama, but went out of her way to drug and nearly take advantage of Fushi while he was paralyzed, all in the hope of them becoming one. The twisted love not only cost her whatever chance she may have had of getting on Fushi's good side, but also leaves her isolated and at the inevitable mercy of the knockers. Number 8, Chibita and Iyami, Mr. Osamatsu. Somehow managing to end up in even more cringeworthy situations than the Matsuno brothers, the hopeless pair of Chibita and Iyami will do anything and everything in order to get some green, even if it involves taking an experimental drug that turns them into attractive women. <laughs> Given their neat nature, the titular sex tuplets immediately fall for the charm, leading Chibita and Iyami extorting them every chance they get. <laughs> the fun doesn't last forever, however, as the drug eventually wears off and exposes their scam. We think getting trapped in a cage with a tiger as a result is mightily appropriate. Number 6, 
Number seven, Jamil. Is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon? Aside from looking like a toad, Jamil is also ugly on the inside. Despite being part of the lusty yet neutral Ishtar family, she has no love for her clan's rules and will do anything to get what she wants. Especially if it involves getting some of that sweet, sweet bell, even going as far as trying to force herself upon him. <laughs> Alas, whatever feminine wiles she thought she had proved useless when she makes the fatal mistake of trying to seduce Otaro in order to get herself out of a jam. And this is what happens when you push the Freya button. Number 6, Mine and the King – The Rising of the Shield Hero After all the deceit, betrayal, and murder attempts, we finally got to see Shield Bro get the justice he deserved, and more importantly, get to see this diabolical duo suffer the weight of their choices. In an effort to discredit the name of the shield hero, Mine falsely accuses Naofumi of assault, conspires with the church to have him eliminated, all the while pushing her own agenda to lay claim to the throne. They may have been spared from execution, but having their names permanently changed to lewd remarks is vengeance enough. Number 5, Oingo and Boingo – Jojo's Bizarre Adventure – Stardust Crusaders <laughs> By far the most laughable excuses for stand users we've ever seen, these lackluster servants of Dio sought to kill off Jotaro and company by using Boingo's power of prediction to set up increasingly elaborate traps. Naturally, they all come undone, mostly at the expense of the brothers' general health. <laughs> you think we'd get tired of fate literally working against these two, but nah, this shit's too funny. Especially when they somehow managed to take what appeared to be an ironclad victory and still mess it up. <laughs> Number 4, Makoto Ito. School Days. Congratulations, Makoto. For once, you're not at the top of our list. Don't get us wrong, you're still an asshole who cheated on a million different girls, using their bodies, and leaving them emotionally destroyed in the aftermath. Can you blame us for reveling in your bloody demise as one of your conquests cuts you to ribbons? <gasps> so cathartic. While his murder might have been a bit of an extreme reaction to the reveal of his adultery, we still can't help but feel nothing but contempt for this little bastard. One more stab for the road, Sekai? <laughs> Number 3, Muhammad Ali Jr. Baki. All aboard the Humiliation Conga Line. The son of the legendary boxer, Junior looked like he was on track to become one of the series' strongest competitors. Instead, he flubbed it. <laughs> so determined to prove himself superior to Baki, Junior went about challenging his inner circle as well as putting the moves on his girlfriend. All of which led him to getting his ass handed to him again and again. <laughs> he 
he didn't even get a chance to put up a decent fight against Bucky, instead getting choked out moments after the bell rang. That's got a sting. <laughs> Number 2. Sugo Nobuyuki – Sword Art Online Whether he's behind the scenes or using the guise of Fairy King Oberon, this gamer's core characteristics remain the same. He's an arrogant crapsack that really shouldn't be within a mile of teenage girls. Yummy. How sweet. Sugo! You bastard! You bastard! After managing to free himself and Asuna from Alfheim Online, Kirito ends up getting in a real-world knife fight with the man behind the online sick mug. Did you think I'd let you slow me down? Wanna know what the punishment is? Death. Unfortunately for Sugo, without the assistance of VR, he's something of a pushover, which Kirito demonstrates in great detail when he smashes his face into a car. And it's all I'm gonna need to kill you once and for all! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Clayman That time I got reincarnated as a slime. You'd think that after the pompous manner in which he set about ordering the destruction of Tempest and the slaughter of Rimuru's people, this wannabe demon lord would be able to take defeat gracefully. Nope. Instead, all Clayman can do is wail as he gets thoroughly thrashed by both Shion and Rimuru. <laughs> The latter of which condemns him to an afterlife of suffering when he uses his own Demon Lord abilities to feast on his body completely. Definitely a bad day at the office for the former jester. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.